I'm in a park in Los Angeles that's also a, a grapefruit grove, and it's open to the public. And I'm sitting in a chair that's that pretends to be log chair, but actually it's made of something else here. It has a rustic look. <laughs> and so I thought I'd mention something that happened last night in the middle of the night. I think it was last night, maybe the night before. And with an observation along those lines, I was asleep and I woke up and I had a, like a vision on the astral plane. And uh, I, the most important thing about the vision, I mean, a lot happened, but the most important thing about the vision was another being that I sent to be there who was, uh, he was a magnificent soul. And uh, I sensed he was alive, you know, in the daytime, but at, at night, in, when he was asleep, he became his actual, his soul spread out across the world and it was uh, it was like everybody's soul I think how all our souls are when we're sleeping they they have no form it's pure spirit and the spirit is is uh, wise and beyond anything that we know to be wise and clear and the heart is open and and neutral. The heart is like a bell ringing in a church steeple in the dead of winter when the snow is all around on the ground. That sound of the crystal clear bell ringing. That's how the heart is in, in the soul. It's, it's like um, it's like neutral uh, all-encompassing compassion. Like that. And, and this, this soul that's awake as we lie sleeping, it has none of the personality hang-ups. It, um, it has no karmic issues. It's pristine and pure and everlasting and caring for the whole world and looking out for, for many other souls. It's pretty cool, the idea of, of, of who we really are. And we're like that, what, eight hours a day? Eight hours a day, we're our true, true soul. It's just that we don't remember when we wake up, you know? I have one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, it's about coming into our true power. That's our soul power. Our truest, truest, greatest, most magnificent soul power. You know, as we continue on this path towards ascension and into ascension, because really, into the realization of ascension, because in truth we're already there, we have obstacles to overcome. And one of those obstacles is the acquisition of uh, what's it called, the cities, the the psychic powers. Um, the thing I, on reading Patanjali, the af aphorisms of Patanjali many years ago, it, it, it was laid out very, I, I realized very clearly that the cities are a big obstacle into, to the, to the realization of, of all that we are, our, to, our, to the realization of our true power. And they can sidetrack us because they make us think, if we acquire even one, they make us think that we are great and magnificent and perfect beings, you know? <laughs> when in fact, we've just realized one tiny aspect of our true soul power. So the thing to do with cities, this is my idea, the thing to do with cities, if we come across them, if we're, I should say, unfortunate enough to come across them in our lives, is to just give them up to the divine, you know, surrender those powers to the divine. Because when we do that, we come into a power that's a hundred thousand times more beautiful and more strong through the divine coursing through us and creating in the, in the moment, creating all that you can imagine all the good things for Earth and all her people. 
so don't get sidetracked by one little city. Find your true soul power, your, your highest soul power, your greatest, your most magnificent. And that is, that is all for today. Talk to you later.